is up guys welcome back so today I'm going to be sharing with you guys my favorite base products for no makeup makeup I don't know I know it sounds ridiculous to be like here's some makeup to make it look like you're not wearing makeup but we all know there are lots of different things that can happen to our skin like for me pigmentation adult acne these kinds of things that I just prefer to camouflage. And these are the products, the foundations and the concealers or hybrids thereof that give me that effortless complexion look that sort of mimics skin in one way or another, but doesn't ever make me feel too made up. Took me a long time to unpack this in my beauty routine. I was a full beat person for a very long time because I had pretty bad skin. But even when my skin was really bad, bad by my standards, I found that I was more comfortable camouflaging my blemishes with things that were medium or low coverage than to just spackle everything down and try and draw a face on top of it. It's just how I was more comfortable. And if you are someone who wakes up with, you know, perfectly even skin and doesn't need any complexion products, then just count yourself as blessed and you can watch this video for entertainment purposes. But for the rest of us, I have taken a bunch of like macro shots in natural lighting. That's why the lighting is a little bit different because I don't feel like closing the blinds. It's just so nice outside. But uh, the, you'll see up close me applying these foundations and concealer. And uh, a lot of this stuff is going to be familiar to you guys, but regardless, I just wanted to heap them all into one video. So let's go ahead and jump in. I feel like I could wax poetic about this topic all day long. That is why it's taking me so long to get into this video is because it's something I'm really passionate about and something that is in my core. I really empathize with the journey of trying to get away from wearing a whole bunch of coverage, not because I think it's ugly, but because I don't like the feeling of a whole lot of stuff on my face. And I also don't like the feeling of my makeup feeling fragile. Like I have to keep checking it throughout the day. I would so much rather something, I always say wear in instead of wearing off. I should just do a whole like do's and don'ts of no makeup makeup, because I think that there's a lot of like mental stuff that you have to do kind of moving yourself from the full beat mentality to the no makeup makeup mentality. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not an expert, but regardless, let's go ahead and talk about these products. I'm going to move from the dewiest to the most matte satin finish. And another thing that I feel like I should say is this is not exclusive to people who only want like hair to stick to their face all day, okay? Or people who only have dry skin. There are a lot of foundations out there that are like mm, effortless, no makeup, whatever, but they're so dewy and they all kind of rush towards the middle in my mind of, you know, okay, dry down-ish skin tints and we're not gonna be talking about any of those today. These are like the best of the best that, you know, I think of for comfort as I'm falling asleep at night. Like, I'm so glad you exist. I'm so glad that I have you. And I'm going to hopefully be able to accommodate uh, skin that isn't like mine. <laughs> hopefully. But we're going to start with the dewiest. And this is the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint SPF 40 in Europe. I think it's SPF 30. And this is the dewiest fam. Like it has this super bouncy glycerin-y thing on the skin, which might drive you crazy if you already have skin that is prone to getting oily throughout the day. This probably isn't going to give you any kind of long wearing mattification. But there is something really cool about this and that is that it is silicone free and coconut free. So it is worth to me the $46 for that purpose. And it does come in a pretty, a pretty substantial menagerie of shades. I haven't looked lately. I do feel like they kind of rush towards the white end, but they did release, I think like 30 shades in this. I would have to look, but it is a very, very sheer formula in terms of, I call it my arbitrary scale of coverage. This is like a two on one to 10. And we are really only gonna be dealing, I think like the most we're dealing with today might be like a four, maybe three and a half. So yeah, this is super low coverage, very like dewier than regular skin and uh, not necessarily skin mimicking in that sense, but it's gonna be super slippy, super bouncy and very, very like healthy on the skin. It's gonna give you like a glow, not an iridescent glow, but a bouncy textural glow. Okay, second dewiest, but also very different because it has silicone in it. This is the Glossier Perfecting Skin Tint comes in 12 shades is $26 I think and it is it is very very nice I like it very much I have also heard from a lot of people 
uh, in you know various age groups say that this works on mature skin really beautifully because it is really hydrating. It doesn't particulate. So it does have a, just enough silicone and a little bit of dimethicone in it that it's very lightweight on the skin, but it's gonna give you that glossier bounce texture on your skin with like a 1.5 level coverage. It's not a lot of coverage. It is more about having a really, really pretty texture for things to slip around on, on your skin as you're putting on your concealer and things like that. You can powder it, you know, they make the powder uh, with glossier, but like, it's, it's a little bit slippy for that. It will kind of absorb things and break up, I feel like. It's just a little bit emollient for that. Um, so it's not necessarily how I would recommend wearing it. But as far as no makeup makeup is concerned, we can't not talk about Glossier. It's just, it's what they set out to do. And it's what a lot of other companies have been chasing down ever since, you know? Is this, uh, honestly, kind of a brave thing when it came out to come out with something that was like, buy this, it's hardly there. <laughs> So, um, I mean, I guess that that's kind of the whole concept of this video at this point, but this to me was, at least in my purview, was the original. So, um, I do really, really like this. I do still wear it. It doesn't offend my skin in any way. It's not heavy. It's very, very pretty. And um, it agrees with a lot of things. You'll see that something that's not in this is the like Kosas tinted oil because I find that it is too temperamental at the end of the day uh, and uncooperative with certain other products for me to recommend on my channel just because I, I don't want to give like 800 caveats to who it's for and what it works with. Next in terms of dewiness, I just think that this is the greatest thing. I think the absolute world of this particular skin tint. Oh my gosh, this is the Typology Serum Tint. I have this in the shade 01. I also own it in the next deeper shade because I wasn't sure what my shade was going to be. And when you buy this, if you think you're between shades, they will give you, give you, they will sell you the second one at half price so that you can mix to match your own skin, which I think is a creative way of getting to the inclusivity for a small shade range. The price tends to fluctuate online, I think depending on the exchange rate for euros, I guess it would be, because when I first made the video, this was $25.80. Now I think it's like $26.50. Regardless, I have looked a couple of different times and like it'll just fluctuate ever so slightly. But when I bought this, the two of them came for, you know, under, under $40. It is the most agreeable formula. It has, I would say, like a two and a half coverage wise. And I have powdered this. I have worn this with a full coverage concealer. I'll talk about that in just a bit. It doesn't have silicone in it, but it really behaves like it does. It has a beautiful skin like dry down. It is so beautiful. And when I put it, every time I put this on, I just go, yeah, you know, when you put something on your skin and you're just like, oh yeah. Like I get excited to wear this and it comes in glass. It's in an actual functional eyedropper, which is more than I can say for other eyedroppers that I have in my collection. And I just love it so much. It's their only complexion product I think that they even have in their line and it's just so good. So yeah, I enjoy this very much. Lee. Okay, next I want to talk about something that I have not talked about enough on my channel, but this is the Daydream Cushion SPF Cushion Foundation from M Cosmetics. And I didn't know exactly where to put this in terms of doing this. I feel like it's right there with typology. This is $48. You get two cushions in here. I think it comes in five or six shades and it is again, very, very low coverage. I would put this at a three. It is a little bit more than the typology and it is so agreeable, beautiful, does have SPF in it, bouncy. This is a very K-beauty type formula. It's perfecting without being a lot of coverage and it does have a really good skin mimicking finish to it and it has a lot of flexibility to coverage. So that means that, you know, if you were to totally spread it out and get really, really thin, it's not gonna do anything weird, breaking up or you seeing the particles of the makeup and it gathering in your pores or something, but it also builds up pretty nicely. And I just really think it's beautiful. It's a fantastic kind of all-in-one complexion product too. You can build it up and wear it alone. Um, I feel like it doesn't necessarily build to full coverage, but you can get extra coverage building it like underneath your eyes or on top of blemishes. <sighs> this is what I have on my face right now and I just, I don't know. I don't always think that expensive is better, but this is just so good. And when I first reviewed this, this is the Chantecaille Future Skin Cushion. I had the wrong shade. I had the shade Alabaster. I ended up giving that to my mom because when she came to visit, she fell in love with it and she is just a 
hair deeper skin than I am. And so it worked perfectly for her. And she is 63 years old. So the fact that it worked on her skin and she was loving it, and it also works really beautiful on my skin at 34 is pretty stinking cool. So this also comes with two cushions. It's $128. Uh, lots of skincare ingredients. Chantecaille is a very high-end French brand, but uh, they do a lot of philanthropic efforts. Everything that you buy has some kind of philanthropy to it. They're always donating back to really cool animal causes and things like that. They're proudly cruelty-free. And what I was getting around to saying was that when I had the wrong shade, I was just kind of spreading it out really, really thinly. And I was like, wow, this is like a 0.5 in terms of coverage. But now that I have the right shade in it, I realized that you can really press this into the skin and build, I would say, to like a two in terms of coverage. Like you can really build it up and it doesn't get gummy. And what's special about this to me is that it does not have a dewy finish. It really mimics skin. It almost looks like you found the world's greatest setting powder. I don't know why I'm getting close to the camera. I took macros. but. It's like you found the world's greatest setting powder because it is so beautifully long wearing for not having any powder on it. It's amazing. It's amazing how when you touch this, it doesn't come off. And it's like, it's just got this incredible dry down, but it is not high coverage. It doesn't really, I don't know. It doesn't look like makeup. It's truly no makeup makeup. It is a subtle, beautiful, fascinating formula, and it's good for my skin, and I can't stop wearing it. I couldn't stop wearing it before, but now that I have the perfect color, which is Aura, it is, it is obsession worthy. I absolutely love this. Do you need to spend $128 on a cushion foundation? No, I don't think, like I said always, that like more money means better quality, but uh, I do really love this. If if you are looking for something that's kind of like this, I think that you can get a very similar look and feel with the Typology or the M Cosmetics, but the subtleties of this are what make it worth the money to me. Sometimes I talk about how I am not really a makeup hobbyist and I tend to collect makeup because I want this encyclopedic knowledge, right, of all the different stuff that's out there so that I can help you spend less money getting to the thing that you actually want. This is something that would go in my own personal makeup collection were I not a YouTuber. Like if everything got like stolen in the middle of the night, this might be the first foundation that I repurchased. I like it that much, so yeah. And finally, in the mattest of the matte category for a skin tint, this is the Fenty Beauty Ease Drop. 25 shades, $29.50 I wanna say for this, and you get an ounce, uh, 1.08 fluid ounces, and I have heard a lot of different opinions on this formula. From what I can tell, it's just not for everybody and I don't really know why, but it is flawless on my skin. I am so in love with this formula. I am so surprised at how much I love this formula because it truly is a hybrid of a skin tint and a foundation in the way that it has a matte, Satin, satin, and it's not matte. It's, but it is so much more mattifying than any other skin tint that I have that it just, it's tough to describe, but it's worth trying because it's just special. And it has a beautiful dry down. You can powder it, but it works completely fine without powder too. And I just really think they hit the nail on the head with this one. I apply this really thinly with my hands, like with my fingers, and it just absolutely goes on faster than anything else. I mean, just so fast. It just blends straight in and I have the shade two. It is a perfect match for me. And I just, I think the world of this stuff, I've been wearing it all the time. And what I really like about this, and someone pointed it out because I was talking about like things that look good in person and on camera and how a lot of brands have had to start thinking of things that way because that's how a lot of us interact with makeup right now is through a camera lens. We're not going into as many stores right now. So we really wanna try and capture reality. And you know, it would, behoove a brand to try and make their product look good on camera, even if it also looks good in person. A lot of times really shiny, bouncy, dewy stuff doesn't really translate well on camera because it reflects light so much. This absorbs light, but does not have a whole lot of coverage. Again, this is like a four. This is probably the highest coverage of all of them. And a few of you guys were very smart to point out, most people who are working from home are working on Zoom. So they're on camera too. And so, you know, 
This is a beautiful thing if you're just trying to kind of get yourself ready to get on camera for the day kind of thing on, you know, on your computer. Absolutely gorgeous. Looks great on camera, looks great in person. If you're going to an event or something like that, it photographs really well, again, because it doesn't reflect light. The texture of it is just something truly special. So I, I really do think this is a fantastic release from Fenty. So those are my faves in terms of foundations. You'll notice there are no shimmer goos in this. I could talk for days if I were to include things that are just kind of light reflecting and not necessarily complexion products. That is why, and I will stick it in a card if I can remember to, I have a best and worst shimmer goos video. <laughs> Please refer to that if that is what you're curious about because I go into a lot of detail. Okay, so in terms of concealers, I'm going to, instead of going from dewy to matte, I'm going to go from light coverage to full coverage. This requires a speech, I guess. So when we are talking about a no makeup makeup look, you know, a lot of us have gone and watched like the, the old Lisa Eldridge video where she actually covers blemishes with her like pinpoint technique where she literally, um, reverse contours them so that they look like they're receding from the eye with just very subtle uh, temperature differences in the, the shades that she's using because she's brilliant. And, um, you know, pinpointing just the blemish itself and using color correction and stuff like that so that the rest of your face doesn't have to have a whole lot of coverage because I think that any of us who has struggled with skin indiscretions has also found that you can put on a full beat uh, of, of foundation, like you, you can do a full coverage foundation, and then as you're putting your powder on, it knocks all the foundation and concealer off the blemishes anyway, and then you end up with a whole bunch of makeup on the part of your face that you didn't really need a whole lot of coverage on. What was the point? And then you're stuck kind of piling powder on top of the blemishes, and then you end up with way more makeup on your face than you ever intended to, and you really did go in with good intentions. So I do think that there is a purpose, even for no makeup makeup, maybe especially for no makeup makeup, to have a couple of different concealing products in your repertoire if you do have things that you like to cover on a daily basis that have various textures and various coverage levels and just apply them very delicately. So the full coverage concealers that I'm gonna be talking about today are extremely agreeable in terms of being able to be used in that fashion instead of something that kind of only has one level of coverage that it wants to be at and that's it. And there are products like that too. So these are things that are very flexible and agreeable. So starting with the lightest coverage, man, what a great little, what is this, like a $6 concealer? This is the e.l.f. Flawless Brightening Concealer. And you notice something that is conspicuously absent from this, you maybe didn't notice because we haven't been talking about concealers that long, but you will notice, is the Chantecaille Camouflage Stylo. You don't need to pay $55 for one of these little jobbies. You can go and get the one from e.l.f. and it is Great, I like it better than the Chantecaille. Like I said, more money doesn't always equal better quality. I love this. And I'm not saying that the Chantecaille one is bad, I just want you to keep your $55, you know, if you, if you want to. The more I have tried this, the more I like it because it has this really, really beautiful skin-like dry down. And as you spread it out, it just goes just uncomplainingly straight to skin finish. It's beautiful. And the thing that I don't like about the Chantecaille and other products that have this sort of dispenser that I always call the like YSL Touche Cloth applicator is that a lot of times they kind of blend away. It just kind of makes me crazy. You know, you're putting on this like light coverage, brightening concealer thing, but you do want a little bit of coverage. And I feel like it's almost insulting when you, you know, have spent that much money on something and you go to blend it and it just goes away. You're just like, Oh, okay, cool. So this does actually maintain coverage. I would give this like a, a five in, in terms of, you know, the one to 10 coverage of it all. It is a good like light to medium, maybe a four and a half, you know? And, and I just think the world of it, I really do. All right, I'm going to talk about these two things in tandem because they are almost one and the same to me. So this is the Glossier Stretch Concealer, $18. And this is the Conceal to Reveal Palette from Undone Beauty. And I believe that this is $14. So this has these little pans in it. 
Someone said that this doesn't have metal in between it anymore. When I first bought this, it had metal in between the actual pans and it gave me the heebies, but uh, I'm not sure that it has that anymore. Regardless, it goes from light to medium to full coverage, which could be very appealing for you. So I have noticed that, you know, the full coverage one is quite full coverage and the light one is kind of, you know, touche claw e and that's very, very cool. You can get this online on Amazon, you can get this on their website, you can get it at Target if you're in America kind of thing. Um, but it's a very, very nice consistency of product and it really reminds me so much of the Glossier Stretch Concealer, which up until I found this, you know, I found it years ago, but I really couldn't have compared the Glossier Stretch Concealer to anything else. It is a skin mimicking finish that you can't, I never, recommend dragging anything across your skin, but both of these have enough slip and warm with your fingers and with the skin on your face enough to wipe them and, you know, tap them and wipe them. I also have found that they work beautifully with a brush. No dry down, don't, don't expect a dry down, that no dry down kind of lotion-y, balmy, balm is the word, balmy concealer. So, you know, if you're okay with reaching up and touching your under eye and there's something there, then, you know, these are okay. But if you want something that has a little bit more of its own dry down, a little bit more long wearing, skip these. Um, but these are one of the best textures for blending right into the skin, warming up to your skin's texture, and then just kind of disappearing while still camouflaging, if that makes sense. Next, Kosas. While I don't love the Kosas Tinted Oil, I do love the Kosas Revealer Concealer. I just think that this is a very, very good formula. It goes with everything. It really agrees. And even though I have fallen in love lately with the Pat McGrath Sublime Under Eye, or what's it called? Sublime Perfection Concealer. <laughs> That's what it's called. I've fallen in love with that lately. I still actually prefer this under my eyes. Like if I were to pull out two concealers, which I often am far too lazy to do, this would still be my under eye concealer of choice because it's so hydrating but it doesn't stay all balmy dewy the way that the Glossier Stretch Concealer does. And it doesn't, I have like, when I do that, you know, um, which apparently I do a lot. I actually have this little bend right here in, in my under eye, which don't worry, I'm not losing any sleep about it. But that is where I will notice that concealers gather. If they're gonna gather, sometimes they gather there. This doesn't. And it also tolerates powder. It works with silicone-based foundations. It works with no foundation. It works with oil-based foundations. It's great. I do not know why. It is just great. And I use the shade one, but they have come out with more, so I don't know when to try more. But regardless, um, this was, until I found the uh, Pat McGrath, I mean, this was like my go-to concealer all the time. Like when I pan it, I will rebuy it kind of thing. You know, again, makeup hobbyist, this would be my, you know, my personal collection concealer. And second to highest coverage, I actually just got this and you guys haven't seen it yet on my channel. I don't love the Le Camouflage Stylo, but this is the Real Skin Plus Eye and Face Stick from Shantikai. And it is, you know, a concealer basically. I guess you could put this everywhere, but it's pretty stiff. And it is pretty high coverage. I would give it like a seven for coverage. And I think that the highest is probably gonna be the Pat McGrath at like, I would put it at like a nine. <laughs> um, but regardless, I love this for all of your cream skin needs. It's stiff. It's very stiff at room temperature. And so like when you do put this on your finger and you use it to kind of, yeah, yeah. It does a good job of kind of going in one place, staying there. It's not going to give you full, full, full. It also isn't then going to like slip and move around and stuff or get like all greasy or anything. You don't need a whole lot. It is pretty concentrated. And I do, I just think that this is really nice. You can use this on your whole face. It cooperates obviously really well with the Chantecaille foundation that I use too. And it is kind of that perfect medium coverage that builds just a little bit, but it's never going to look super makeup-y and it blends really flawlessly into the warmth of your skin. It's just a really, really pretty product. I accidentally bought two of them, so I'm glad that I like it. Who does that? Who goes into their cart and goes, oh, this is really expensive. I guess I will not double check that I only have one of each thing. No, I bought two. So whatever. Okay, one more concealer and then I will talk about the little hybrid product which you guys probably already know what I'm gonna say. So I am actually going to talk about the Sublime Perfection Concealer from Pat McGrath because it's special. 
okay? First of all, it is full coverage. This is going to be the one that gives you that full coverage vibe without ever doing any kind of weird particulation because a lot of times when you have a blemish and you cover it, regardless of wh like whether or not you powdered it, the product will still kind of dry out on top of whatever scab you might have, and it will get kind of dry and creepy looking over the day. This is really hydrating, but it's also really high coverage, but it's also skin finish. And when you use a brush or a sponge or your fingers or whatever and spread this out, wow, the finish on this. It is like this better than reality smoothness. I can't explain it. You'll just have to use your eyeballs, but the smoothness of this and the fact that it does wear a really long time is why it's worth the money to me and why I can't put it down. I can't put it down. I have the shade L2. It's going to keep your secrets. That's all, that's all there is to say about that. It's wonderful. And then the hybrid of it all, <laughs> a $68 foundation stick. Please don't leave. If you honestly, if you stuck it out through the Chantecaille foundation, you're here for anything. So um, this is the Vital Skin Foundation Stick from Westman Atelier. Look how much I've used of that. And that's not even, ha ha ha, that wasn't even rolled all the way down. Bye. Yeah, she's all the way down in the caverns. This is all that I have left of this. <laughs> and then I will absolutely repurchase this. This is in the shade Atelier Zero. And I love this for exactly as Gucci Huesman, uh wants you to apply this, which is with a brush and whisper it on your face. I don't often use a foundation of any kind when I use this, but it is saturated enough, it's high coverage enough, I would give it like an eight. At the most that you could build her up, I would give her an eight. You can really pound this on underneath your eyes and get like a pretty darn good, like dark circles coverage situation, but you can just whisper it on the rest of your skin and it really mimics skin so well that if you get your perfect shade in it, you cannot tell that it is there which is phenomenal. Something that gives you incredibly flexible coverage all the way from practically nothing to almost full. And it doesn't look like it's there. It's, I mean, that's, that's what I'm looking for in a makeup. So yeah, I think that that's what makes this so special and why to me, even though they call it a foundation stick, I consider it more of like a concealer foundation hybrid. I will just put this on on top of a tinted sunscreen or a shimmer goo or something like that and just let my skin speak for itself through it. Very good for pinpoint concealing. It just does everything. It's very, very good stuff. The, actually, the one thing that I wouldn't say that it does, and some people have told me that they do this and it's fine. It's a very easy way to get through the product really fast, but um, is to actually, you know, put it all over and blend it out like you would a full coverage stick concealer. I have never found it to be particularly agreeable to that on my skin, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> which is what you came here for. So yeah, very, very in love with this. And for the $68 price tag, I mean, this has lasted me almost two years, which is, you know, past the expiration date. But if you were using it every day, which I don't because I have so much other makeup, then, you know, you could definitely use it within the 18 month expiration date easily. So those are my recommendations. When I, again, am like counting sheep at night, I'm not counting sheep, I'm counting um, things that bring me comfort uh, neutral palette, um, pieces of clothing in my closet. I'm just like counting white button downs or like I'm counting, um, you know, really beautiful low coverage foundations or really, really satisfying skin finish concealers or blushes, <laughs> really, really bouncy dewy lip glosses. <laughs> These are the things that bring me comfort at night. So um, yeah, I hope that you guys found this valuable. These are the things that I would choose for this particular look. And yeah, let me know if you guys do want a video where it's like the do's and don'ts of no makeup makeup, eh, because I'm such an expert, but um, I don't know. That's why I never do do's and don'ts videos is because I don't ever think of myself as like an authority on anything. But I guess by this point, I've done enough makeup looks that I could be considered some kind of guru. I, I have no idea, you tell me. But. Thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this, do give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Thank you very much for watching, for hanging out with me today. I love you guys so much. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. -bye.